Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast. And today we have Matt with us. I'm not going to try and butcher his name. Matt, why don't you give it a go? You probably said it once or twice before, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, just once. It, or once or twice. Uh, it's Napawatsky. Napawatsky. Okay. I, I should have gone for it, man. And I think that's the secret to life. Just go for it. And uh, what's interesting is this it's all about intent. If my intent was to make fun of your name, even if I covered it well, you kind of know it. But if my intent is to go for it, you sense it too. So how important do you think intent is in the work that you do when you're dealing with your clients? Oh, it's everything. Um, the Just having like the intent and the good intention to just benefit them is huge just because um, ultimately that's what they're going to pick up on and see the genuineness. And then two, if you do, like if you were to make a mistake or do something, at least they would know that it wasn't intentional. And that just helps to, of course... Uh, fix that and move on really. Absolutely. I think it's uh, a lot of times we're obtuse as humans because what we're doing is we're thinking about what's my next meeting? What do I want for lunch? What do I do this when we're interacting? But there's another part of us that uh, picks up intent and picks up those nonverbal cues, even though we don't realize it, but some part of us always does, right? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And that's, yeah, that's the main, the main thing. As long as you have that good intentions, yeah, people will notice it and they'll uh, be more than happy to, you know, work with you and everything. So how long have you been in the business? Not that long, actually. Right now, I, I've just been licensed for about seven months. So not that long, actually. Nice. So a newbie and you're coming in at this very interesting part of history where uh, interest rates are going up. People are like freaking out. Oh, yeah. And uh, so how's that going? <laughs> it's, you know, it's not too too bad they're definitely there's like a public i'd say misperception just with the way it's kind of presented and the media plays it and stuff um it certainly has slowed down the market and business but it's nice because it has made it a lot more balanced so or a lot more balanced so it's a good like market for doing transactions in um it's just it's just a big change because the rates were so low that they did go up pretty significantly so it really affects um like a buyer's decision when they're looking. So I think the main thing is just, you know, once the dust settles and uh, the cha- everyone gets used to the change, things will just carry on and we'll be good. So how many transactions have you done so far? Uh, so far I've done eight and then I have a listing right now that I'm, that's active and I'm going to be having another one coming up soon. So hopefully I'll have 10 uh, within the next month or two, but uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. Right. And for the year you'll be uh, probably at 10, 12 for the year you figure. Hopefully, yeah, that's right. By the time everything closes and everything, that should be. Which is a pretty good freaking first year, right? So congratulations. (laughs) Thanks, I appreciate it. So who's a mentor for you out there in the industry? And uh, what is this person, him or her doing that you admire? For a mentor, I'd say, well, there's definitely the two team leaders that I have. um, Because I'm on a team right now. So I have uh, two team leaders, which are two gentlemen that I used to work with at a different job. And they offered me the opportunity to work with them. And uh, so I've just been working with them over the past while and just learning from them. And they're doing a really great job of like teaching me, coaching me one-on-one and kind of giving me the insights. And I think that's what's helped and give me the advantage versus someone just coming in brand new um, and not really necessarily having that mentorship or knowing what to do. Because it definitely is a lot to take in and it can be uh, challenging at first. Have you had a freak out moment yet? No, actually. I mean, there was, I had one listing that was, we were getting pretty close to the crunch time of like trying to actually uh, um, get it sold. So it was a little like, I guess, stressful there, but overall it's actually been pretty good. It's been pretty smooth. Nice. Uh, So who on the team is the rock star? Do you remember Uh, the team? Like who's the rock star there? There is uh, there'd be the two, it'd be our team, our team leaders, um, Dan and Brad are their names. And they're, uh, they're the two, they're the names of the, um, of the team, like their last, they're a part of the Howard McCulloch real estate group. So those are right last names. And um, yeah, they're definitely the ones they're, they're good. They got tons of experience. They know what they're doing and they're really helping us. uh, The newer members just, yeah, be rock stars. (laughs) Nice. So where do you need to grow? Like, what are you looking to, I need to get better in this area of real estate or personal development. 
Um, I think the main thing would just be, for me, would be just establishing the brand and just becoming more uh, popular because I work in two different areas um, in Ontario. So being able to establish myself in both of those areas and then just have that brand and then just do, you know, have that identity that establishes me different from other agents that way when people are looking through, you know, the internet or anything, they would uh, be more opt- or more willing to uh, want to work with me. Nice. So what do you want people to know about you? Like, uh, you know, if they knew this, I would have done a really good job. My marketing's really solid. Like, uh, because one of the problems in any industry, and especially real estate, because there's, you know, more than four realtors, is that they all start sounding the same. So how do you, what do you want people to know about you that would make a difference? For me, it would definitely just be the um, the genuineness and the relationship focused on the person themselves. Because for me, like, I always believe, I'm a firm believer in people over profit. Um, in the sense where, like, I'm not out there to, I mean, like, yes, it is my living. It's my source of income, of course. But the main focus, honestly, is just to um, establish that relationship and then just really get to know the person because um, that just has so much more value. And ultimately, if you do the job properly, you know, the the money and the value comes. But so the main thing is really just, uh, yeah, I just want to get to know them and uh, basically ultimately be not just their realtor, but more like their friend kind of thing. Nice. So one of the things that happens in all sports teams around the world is they get to a certain point and they start losing their way and they start losing games. Fans get angry and then they fire the manager and say, get the hell out of here. And they do. And a new manager comes in and the very first interview, the manager goes, Hey, my name is Bob. I'm going to be the new manager. We're going to go back to the fundamentals. So fundamentals are key. So what are the fundamentals that you're doing that you you don't want to lose sight of? I definitely would just be um, just the consistency and just staying in touch with like the actual, like the trends, like within the market. So the big thing is because especially in Ontario, like it's such a versatile and dynamic market that it can change very um, like quickly and like drastically too, especially right now with like the rates and stuff. Um, so just being able to having that basics of like just staying on top of it. So you're always ahead of the, the mark. So that's the information, but you said consistency, consistency in doing what? Oh, just um, like this, like staying on the trend. So just being like watching. Oh, okay. So keeping your finger on the pulse, but what about activity? What activity do you need to be doing to meet enough people to have enough transactions? Like, is there anything you're doing on a daily basis? Because, you know, you could look at all the trends and know it, but no one else knows you know it. That's uh, not true. Here. So what are you doing to stay in front of clients or new prospects? Um, it would just be the the public engagement, engagement. So doing things within the community and kind of having myself established and just those little things too. Like, and just kind of getting to know more people, um, like particularly just like in my neighborhood too. Like I have a, I have a big St. Bernard that I always take for walks. So people always like stop to pet her. And uh, so nice. you're getting to actually like talk to those people, learn more about them. And then, uh, yeah, and then just that. And then, um, and then other things too, with like, you know, um, like sports teams and things like that, like local stuff, just uh yeah, just really just kind of get the name out there and just get more. Um, I always say belly to belly, but uh, I get nice. people and actually talking to them. So what's the name of your dog? Uh, Sasha. So do you ever go, you know, uh, you better get me to sell your house or Sasha will bite you. <laughs> oh, no, she's she's really too much of a lover. She'll, okay. she'll literally she may lay lick down. you. She oh. may lick you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She'll jump on you, but it'll just be to lick you and uh, shed all her hair on you. Yeah. Nice. So really, if, you know, realtors that do things well end up becoming a valuable part of the community, where if you got an issue, you can call your realtor and say, oh my God, I know somebody who can help you right now with roof, whatever's going on. And so um, how important do you think that is just kind of being a resource for your community? It's, it's huge. Um, just because like, and that's the thing with any agent, like you certainly want to be like the go-to guy. Like you want like the public to think when they think of real estate, they think of, um, you kind of like if you think of like you think of like cooking and chefs you think of like Gordon Ramsay or something like that like it's kind of at that thing where you want you want to be like the go-to guy um, and ultimately like realtors are kind of like the quarterback of any transaction so there's multiple parties and professionals of course like you got your lawyers your mortgage brokers and a real estate transaction but the realtor is ultimately the one who kind of has the control and everything comes back to them so yeah being able to um just be prepared and help out in that way is huge and with the little things like whether it's stagers or plumbers roofers um and yeah because if there's a problem down the road or if something comes up at the house ultimately um you know it's, it's you want to be able to have your client call you and ask for your help with it and then you just refer it out and yeah nice 
what are some of the lessons you've learned that allowed you to have a really good first year? I'd say the p- patience, definitely. Patience yeah. is huge, um, particularly with, um, and really just mainly with finding just the right place. Cause that's ultimately what it boils down to. Um, cause I've worked with clients and we've done like tons of showings and like, we you know, go from house to house to house and travel like all over the area and stuff. And, um, ultimate, and, but I mean, ultimately it works out. Like, and I think that's the big thing is not trying to rush somebody into something that doesn't benefit them, even though it would benefit you. The main thing is just really holding back and, uh, just, yeah, be really, um, excuse me, uh, just ultimately working and doing what's best for them. Brilliant. So, uh, as you move forward in your career, what do you see yourself in five years? Definitely want to get, I definitely want to get to the broker level. So right now I'm considered like a sales representative, but I would like to up the, um, I guess like the education requirement and cap right. status, that as a broker, but still do the same job and, um, and really just branch out into other areas. So, um, I like, I love the area in the community I work in, but I would certainly like to grow and work kind of more into like Toronto and stuff, just because I just love that city. I love that area. And so being able to do transactions. How far out are you to give me a sense of geography? Yeah, so right now I'm like two and a half hours from Toronto. So, so it's not a bit too of, bad. Yeah, so it's not too bad. But not too bad. Yeah. yeah, but it's um, I don't know. I just love the city. So and like I just love well, like kind of landscape too, and like those old Toronto houses. I love. Um, so just being able to like kind of work in that environment would be amazing. So what's one area where you find yourself uh, maybe uh, stuck a little bit? Like if I could be more bolder or more patient, like where's the one area that in your personality where you're going, you know, I wish I could change that. What's that one area? I, you know, I think it's inter- interestingly enough, um, I'd say probably just the phone, the phone skills. Cause I, uh, which I say it's interesting and ironic because you think that's like, cause I mean, it is like being able to like make the calls and do all that is like, like a very critical part of the job. Um, yeah. but it's one thing that I always, I don't always kind of get nervous and I get kind of caught up with it. And I always get like, uh, reluctant or like when I do like my calling I make like a big thing of it where like I set up my my computer to have all the info and I like block out the time and my schedule or I think I just need to be a little bit more like casual and reluctant and with making the calls like when someone calls me it's you know no problem I answer okay. them. so but, let me help you do that a little bit better yeah uh, are you ready absolutely okay so this is what I'd like you to do in your head I'd like you to make a movie of you let's say on Monday morning making calls and you're just relaxed and powerful and there is no I need to be prepared you're just there doing it so in your head make a perfect movie of you having a great phone session and when you've got the movie made let me know yeah 100 percent. got it made I think so yeah good for happen okay now I want you to think about uh it's a movie right and who would be the right director to tweak it a little bit that would give you better results? Would it be you or would it be like uh, one of your brokers or would it be somebody else that you know that, you know, still looking at the movie, they would suggest changing this and this and this. Like who would be the director, you or someone else? Uh, someone else for sure. Who's the other person first name? Uh, Jordan. Jordan. So have Jordan be Jordan for a moment and see the movie through Jordan's eyes and then notice what you want to change in that movie to make it even better. Yeah. I think, uh, I think of a few things for sure. Yeah. So now you've got to change. What, what are some of the things you tweaked? Um, I think it would just be the initial, like the introduction and the talking for sure. Um, yeah. And, and probably just like the, the soft spokenness. Cause I get to be a little too like soft spoken and I'm, people probably think I'm way too quiet or they can't hear me. Um, but nice. Uh, so speaking a little bit more, uh, louder voice, I'm not loud, but yeah, yeah that more, good. I guess more confident kind of thing you could say. Nice. Now here's the third part I want you to do. You've made this movie of a really good dial session, but then you got Jordan to make it better. So now I want you to step into the movie so you won't see yourself. You might see your hand picking up the phone. So step in the movie and live through that movie so you can you know, feel the phone, you can hear the conversation, just live through it fully and completely. And when you've got that done, let me know. Okay. Um, I think I kind of, let's see. Okay. I think, yeah, I think so. Okay. And now I want you to just see yourself on Monday after your dialing session has gone really, really well. You've got really warm conversations. You made some new friends. You've given some insights. And when you see that you out there in Monday after those calls, notice how he is uh, sitting or standing, how he's breathing, how he's just happy that, or the, oh my God, this was like such a great dial session. Mm-hmm. And when you have that envisioned, 
have that you from Monday float back to where you're sitting right now and step into your body, bringing all that information, how to do it. And now when you think about uh, picking up the phone and dialing, how does it feel different? Um, I'd say, yeah, it's, it's a good, um, like just refresher almost like it. Cause it's nice to be able to see it. Like, uh, I mean, me in particular, I'm a big visual learner, but I think it's safe to say a lot of people are and so, yeah, being able to actually see it, but not just see somebody else do it, like see yourself do it. Yeah. It just, just reiterates, uh, that it can be done. Like it's not impossible. It's not that daunting as I think it is. And it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, just really just being, having like the confidence and, and the mindset too, like the positive mindset to be able to just, yeah, go in and do it. I did a keynote speech about uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago in Washington, D.C. And about two months ago, I got a realtor call me up. He says, I was in that audience two years ago when you spoke and you spoke about mindset. And uh, all of a sudden, I can't dial the phone anymore. I'm like preparing and getting more prepared. I don't have this right. So it comes in and we figure out what belief got created that stopped him. So we changed the belief in the first session. And it's been two months now. And he's been dialing joyously and not just one dollar session a day, two. So we didn't teach him a thing about dialing, but we changed his mindset around it. And that's what intrigues me about humans is the ability to A, go from being okay to eek, I'm stuck. But more yeah. importantly, to go from eek, I'm stuck to being free to do amazing things. And that's what it means to be human. And that's my mission is to teach people how to take charge of their mindset so they become freaking awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has been a great conversation. Hopefully this little tip helps. 100%. And uh, stay in touch because we want to follow your career and see what do you end up doing this year. More importantly, what you end up doing next year. Uh, thanks so much for uh, being on the show. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Cool. I'm going to stop the recording and we'll chat for a few minutes. So dear listeners, have a kick-ass amazing day and I'll see you on the next episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming, and that is the fastest way to get better results.